worry about it. Uh, maybe I'll make a note over here that the quality in state nine is 0 0.9599 in case I need it later. Don't think I will, but just in case. And the quality here at state 10 is 0 0.8116. Anyway, now that gives me the quality, and now I can calculate the enthalpy in state 10 as HF. Now understand, well, let me finish the equation. Understand that this HF is not the same as this HF, right? This enthalpy of saturated liquid is the enthalpy of saturated liquid at 200 kilopascals, whereas this enthalpy of saturated liquid is the enthalpy of saturated liquid at 5 kilopascals. Two totally different things. Okay, in the sense that they're at two different uh, saturation uh, lines. So, again, I won't plug in the numbers for you uh, on the board, but you would look up the enthalpy of saturated liquid at 5 kilopascals and the difference between the enthalpy of saturated liquid and vapor at 5 kilopascals. Plug it into the equation with the appropriate quality. Again, we've got two different qualities here, right, at two different states, 9 and 10. And you'll find the enthalpy in state 10. And when I did that, I found that the enthalpy in state 10 was about 2,104.89. Okay. So that takes care of all of the states on the right-hand side of the diagram. Let's continue with state 1. State 1 is actually pretty easy. State 1 is on the saturation line. So state 1, we actually can look up the temperature very easily. All we need to do is look up the temperature at 5 kilopascals. No problem, that's 32.87. So the temperature of the condensate at state 1 is 32.87 degrees Celsius. We can also look up anything else we want. Since it's on the saturated liquid line, we'd be looking up the F properties, the fluid properties, okay? So if you look up the enthalpy of saturated liquid at 5 kilopascals, which, uh, by the way, notice we've already used, it's going to be the same HF, because that was at 5 kilopascals. If you look that up and write it down, you'll find that it's uh, 137.82 kilojoules per kilogram. You could look up SF if you wanted to, and you say, well, that means the entropy in state 1 and state 2 are the same. And, and you'd be correct, but normally the way we deal with pumps is with an isentropic work equation around the pump. So I'm not going to bother. I don't really care, in other words, about the entropy. In fact, I won't care about the entropy in states uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So I'm just going to know that I don't need entropy anymore for this problem. Okay? So let's see, and I put the question mark in the pressure column instead of the temperature column. It was the, the temperatures we were interested in, not the pressures. Of course, we know the pressure at state two, don't we? State two is on the same line as three and nine. These are all the same pressure because this state two, three, nine combination represents an open feed water heater, or in other words, a mixing chamber and they have to all be at the same pressure. So state two and three have a pressure of 200 kilopascals. Could have jotted that down earlier, I guess. Similarly, states four, five, and eight all have the same pressure of 600 kilopascals. So let's see, four, five, and eight's already filled in. And then state six has to have the 10,000 kilopascal pressure in order to push anything into the boiler. Now, states 3 and 5 are on the saturation line just as state 1 is. So, state 3 would have the properties of saturated liquid at 200 kilopascals. So, to look up state 3, all we have to do is look up, um, to, to get the enthalpy, we look up HF at 200 uh, kilopascals, which by the way we've already done, but I may have erased it. No, here we go. So we would have looked up HF here. This is the same HF that we used in this equation. We'll use as the enthalpy in state 3. So that is 504.70. Uh, 
And then if you look up the enthalpy at 600 kilopascals, let's see, did we use that one already? We did, but I erased it. No, we didn't because that one was superheated. So we look up 600 kilopascals HF and get state 5. That comes out to uh, 670.56 kilojoules per kilogram. So notice that I don't really care about the temperatures here. I mean, I guess I may as well go ahead and jot them down just for reference. Let's see, I don't have them in my solution, but it's easy because we just need the um, saturation pressure at 600 kilopascals, and that is 158.83. We looked up that number earlier, or we noted it earlier. Similarly here at 200 kilopascals, the saturation temperature is 120.21. And so now we've solved all but three states. Now in order to solve the uh, rest of these states, we're, we'll have to use some pump equations, some isentropic pump equations. So let's do that next. The amount of specific work that pump 1 performs is simply V delta P. This is the equation we're going to use for all three pumps. Now in particular at state one we will use the specific volume of saturated liquid at state one because its specific volume at state two will be pretty much the same. Uh, I'm sorry, VF at state one multiplied by the pressure change that that pump has to accomplish. So that pump, pump one, has to raise the pressure from 5 kilopascals to 200. So 200 minus 5 kilopascals. Okay, uh, let's, let's be consistent. Let's say uh, P2 minus P1. Now we can actually calculate the specific pump work, and I did that here. So if you look up the specific volume of saturated liquid, at state 1, you find that it's 0 0.001005 cubic meters per kilogram. And if we multiply that by 200 less 5 kilopascals, remember a cubic meter times a kilopascal will be a kilojoule. So we'll get kilojoules per kilogram here. This comes out to about 0 0.1960. Now understand something here. This pump work is also equal to the enthalpy change of the, the liquid from state one to state two. The pump is raising the energy of the fluid and that comes out as enthalpy. So that enthalpy increase, uh, we can actually calculate the enthalpy in state two uh, if we want it. And then I don't remember if I did that here or not. Yes, I did. Okay, so if we add that 0.196, to 137.82, you come up with about 138.02. And understand it's going to be the same story for pump two and pump three. We can just, you know, print the same story and change the names, right? So from state three to state four, that's going to be H4 minus H3 equals the work that pump two performs, and I'm talking about the specific work, so that's going to be the specific volume of saturated liquid at state three times the pressure change from state three to state four, you see. In the interest of time, I'm not going to fill in all the numbers. I'll just show you the result. You should go and fill in the numbers. The specific pump work for pump two, let me make sure I got all of these right, V3, V4, V3, yes. The number you should come up with is 0 0.4244 kilojoules per kilogram. And then that change in enthalpy would be added to state three's enthalpy, because understand what we're doing here is we're saying, well, if we want to know the enthalpy in state four, it's simply the work, the specific work that pump two does, plus the enthalpy in state three, right? We're just rearranging this part of the equation. If we do that, then we can calculate the enthalpy in state 4 by just taking H3 plus the change in enthalpy and come out with the new enthalpy for state 4. When you do that, you come up with about 505.12 
kilojoules per kilogram. And I'll let you fill in the details for pump three. Just follow this pattern. Use the state numbers five, six, rather than one, two, or three, four. Make sure you know how to find the specific volume. Understand what you're doing with your units. And then when you add that enthalpy change to the enthalpy at state five, you'll get the enthalpy at state six. So that comes out to 680.91 or so. Now notice, one of the things I cared about <coughs> was the temperatures at these two points. Now this can be a little bit confusing, but the best way to approximate the uh, enthalpies at these points is based on temperature. In other words, the pressure is not something that really uh, indicates how much energy the fluid has. So if we're going the other way, if we were trying to say what's the enthalpy given either temperature or pressure, we would choose temperature, right? So what does that mean going back where we've got the enthalpy and now we're trying to find the temperature? Well, what that means is that we should approximate this enthalpy that we've found in state two, four, and six, particularly two and six, because those are the ones where we really care about the temperatures, right? I don't really care about the temperature in state four. I really wanted to contrast these two. We should approximate these enthalpies as if they were enthalpies of saturated liquid. Okay, and you look up these enthalpies as if they were saturated liquids and then interpolate the temperature. Now, I didn't bring a calculator with me and I didn't do this in my solution. I'll let you go through and do this. But if, now it's not, right? But if this was an enthalpy of saturated liquid, what would the temperature be? Well, of course, uh, we don't have 138.02. We do have 138.86. So the temperature at that point is 350 at 138.86. We're going to be a little bit below that. The next point is at 136.27 enthalpy, and it's 325 degrees. I'm just going to call this, I don't know, I'm going to estimate and say it's about 349 degrees. So if the enthalpy is 138, then the temperature is going to be roughly 349 degrees Celsius. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong table. I'm sorry. Pardon me. I'm looking up the wrong thing. That seemed like too high a temperature. Let me try again. So I'm looking up enthalpy. Excuse me. I need enthalpy of saturated liquid at 138. Now I see 137.75. I was looking up temperatures. I'm sorry. I'm still in the pressure table. Okay, so about 137.75. And that's even lower than here, so that won't do. Let me go over to the temperature table. I'm in the pressure table right now. Let's look up an HF of 138.02 and hope we get lucky. Uh, let's see. I see 125 and 146. 138 is somewhere in between those two. So I know the temperature is going to be between 30 and 35 degrees or so. Let's just call it 33 degrees or so. Okay, that seems more reasonable. So the temperature at state two is about 33 degrees. What about at state six? Because remember, the whole point of all this extra complication of open feed water heaters and extra pumps, the whole point is to let the boiler add heat at a much higher temperature. Did we succeed? Let's find out. At state six, the enthalpy is 680.91. I'm looking for an HF of 680.91. I don't care if I find it in the uh, pressure or temperature table. Either will do just fine. Let's see, 680. Here's a point. It's in the temperature table. It's an enthalpy of 675.47 and a temperature of 160. Uh, the next point up is 697.24 and its temperature is 165. Uh, let me see if there's a slightly closer number to 680 in the pressure table. So HF uh, there's one at 684, which is nice and close, and the temperature there is 161, so let's see, back over in the temperature table, I had found HF of 697, uh, oh, no, I found 675, which is below my point at 160, so I'm between 160 and about 161 degrees, or 162, I'll call it 161 or so. So this is about 161 degrees. So look at the difference between those two. We have raised the low end 
where temperature is added, where thermal energy is added, we have raised it from about 33 degrees to about 6, 161 degrees. That's a change of what? 30 is 131, so 128, about 128 degrees. So we've moved up the lowest temperature at which we're adding heat. So this should increase the thermal efficiency. You know, I didn't do this in my solution, but I might write out the equation for you to calculate what the thermal efficiency would be without all of this, this stuff. Um, I'll leave that to you. Anyway, now you can say, well, we've solved everything, right? Because we have all the entities. Almost, not quite. There's actually a little bit more work that we need to perform. And you know, I should have kept the pump works. Let me jot down the amount of specific work that each pump requires. So we know where pumps one, two, and three are. That's easy. Let me just jot down the specific work of each pump. Uh, next to the line. So let's see, the specific pump work for 3 is uh, 10.3494. These are all kilojoules per kilogram. For pump 2, it's 0 0.4244. And for pump 1, it's about 0 0.1960 kilojoules per kilogram. That's a 4 on the end, though, doesn't look like it necessarily. Sorry, my nines and fours look a lot alike. Okay, so there's the specific pump work. The other thing we need to do, notice we don't know Y and we don't know Z. Right? We don't know the, the mass fractions that are being pulled off as bleed steam. How do you figure that out? Well, think about it this way. If you didn't pull off any bleed steam, you couldn't raise state four to the saturated state. Right? It would just be at state 4. The more steam you pull off, the closer you can get 4 to state 5. Now, at some point, the steam is going to start to boil off the water and we'll end up in the saturated region. We don't want that. We just want to raise the water from the compressed liquid region to the saturated liquid region. So we need enough steam, in other words, the right Y fraction, just to pull state 4 to state 5. What does that mean? That means you need to perform an energy balance around the open feed water heater. So with the open feed water heater, what we have is steam coming in on, let's, let's take, uh, I guess we'll take uh, 9, 3, and 2 first. So we've got steam coming in at state 9, subcooled condensate coming in at state 2, and what's leaving is a saturated liquid at state 3. Now this means that we can perform an energy balance around this because look, state 9 has, well actually, you know what, I should have gone with the first one because there's only one unknown Y in that one. Let me, let me switch this around. So what's coming in to uh, regenerate is state 8 and then from the pump is state 4 and out is state 5. Same story. The quality in state 5 is zero, in other words, it's a saturated liquid. But think about it this way. The mass flow rate through the boiler times Y, or Y percent of it, say 10%, we don't know yet what that percentage of it is yet, goes into state 8, right? Or goes through state 8 to come into the, uh, the open feed water heater. State 4, on the other hand, comes in as, let's see, well that's m dot 6 times 1 minus y. Should have written that the other way. There we go. Because it's the rest of it that's coming this way, right? It's coming around to me. I know that it separates out here, but it recombines where you've got 1 minus y percent coming in this way through pump 2 and meeting with the Y fraction to form state 5. So this is, or the flow rate in state 5, is all the flow. All the flow that's going to go through the boiler, M.6, or you could even say M.7, it's the whole thing. So if we write an energy balance for this, what would it look like? Well, let's see. It would look like this.
We need to know the enthalpy coming in at state A, state 4, and out at state 5, but we know all of that already. So the energy balance would say, well, the, the amount of mass that flows in state 8 is y m dot 6. Okay? That stream, that mass flow rate, then has an enthalpy H8. Now stream 4 also carries energy in. Its mass flow rate is 1 minus y times m dot 6. And the rate at which all of this mass flow carries energy in is H4. So these two represents, represent the rate at which streams 8 and 4 bring energy into the open feed water heater. Since the open feed water heater operates at steady state, in other words, there's no gain or loss of energy in the control volume, then all of this energy has to come out at the same rate in stream 5. So that would be m dot 6 h5. Okay, so this is just an energy balance. What confuses students is the y and the 1 minus y, but it's really not that big of a deal. Think about it with simple percentages. Just pretend for the moment that y is 10%. Okay, so if it's 22 kilograms per second, 10% of that would be 2.2 kilograms going this way, right? 1 minus y would be what? 19.8 kilograms finally recombining back at state 3 and going into state 4. That's all this really does for us. It gives us the fractions. So this is going to be 22 kilograms per second. This whole thing here is, what did I say, I think, 19.8 kilograms per second. And this whole thing is just 2.2 kilograms per second if y is 10%, right? Now, understand, we don't know what y is yet. So the only thing we really know is this 22 kilograms per second. We don't know for sure what y is yet. Notice, however, that m dot 6 completely cancels out of this equation. In fact, the only unknown of this equation is now y. Now understand, we are not interpolating, we're not dealing with quality here. We are simply calculating a mass fraction in order to figure out how much goes what way. If you solve for y algebraically, it comes out to h5 minus h4 over h8 minus h4. And so you can plug in the enthalpies and calculate y. When you do that, you see we have them all over here. When you do that, you come out with y equal to about 0.0714. So my estimate of 10% was a little high, right? It's about 7% or so, 7.14% of the mass that goes this way. The rest of it continues down. We can do the same thing for the other open feed water heater. So again, we have subcooled condensate coming in from state two. We have uh, bleed steam coming in from state nine, and the result is state three, where state three is a saturated liquid. But the fractions almost still work, right? Because now there's a Z fraction going this way, and one minus Y minus Z going uh, let's see, going this way, you see? And those fractions are recombining in state 3. So uh, it's not just m dot 6 at state 3, it's 1 minus y that's flowing out of state 3, right? Because that's what remains. We're combining the z fractions, we're left with a 1 minus y fraction. And so our energy balance will look very similar. Let me write it just beneath this one, then I'll erase it so that you can see it. Uh, because we'll have, let's see, energy coming in here. So Z M dot 6 plus 1 minus Y minus Z M dot 6. Oh, I forgot my enthalpy. I'm sorry. I need the enthalpy in state 9. And here I need the enthalpy in state 2. And that will be equal to 1 minus Y multiplied by the enthalpy in state 3. See? See the similarity between the two energy balances? Now notice one interesting thing. Here we just have y, here we just have z, or z. Whereas in the other times we have, you know, we can give a nod to y and to z. The reason is because this fraction is taken with respect to that mass flow rate. Okay? It's not taken with respect to this mass flow rate. That would be confusing. Now since we already know y, I'm done with that one. 
M.6 cancels just as it did before, and I forgot to write it here, I'm sorry. So M.6 cancels just as before, and we can solve for Z. If you do that, you'll find that Z equals 1 minus Y H3 minus H2 minus Y H2 divided by H9 less H2. I want to verify this. Um, let me think for a second. I'm going to look at my solution, make sure I did this properly. Because I may have made a mistake at the board. Now that looks okay. So if you solve for Z, let's see the two terms that have a Z multiplier are H2 and H9. Uh, H9 positive, H2 negative pulls out all the Z terms. Move everything to the other side. This is on the other side. That means we move uh, 1 minus Y, H2 to the other side. And I think I've got a sign error here. Yes, I do. This should be plus. There we go. Okay, so 1 minus y becomes y minus 1, and that makes sense. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure my algebra is correct now. Now, notice we already know y. That's why I had to perform the energy balance on the, the upper open feed water heater first. But now you can calculate z, because the only other things to plug in are the enthalpies. When you do that, uh, you find that z is about 0 0.1373. So there's the mass fraction. Uh, let's see, let's jot these down. Z is 0 0.1373, and Y was 0 point, uh, point 0.0714, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the wrinkle in this problem is that we weren't able to just use enthalpies. Once we knew enthalpies, that wasn't quite enough. We needed a little bit more information. Okay, so there we are. Now we've solved everything. There's, there's nothing else to know except to answer these questions. We know all the mass fractions and all the enthalpies. We know all the qualities. So now let's find out the answers to the question, what's the net power input? You might be tempted with the net power input to take the power input from the turbine here, the further expansion of the turbine in here as well. It'd be fairly complicated because notice that the, there are three different flow rates through the turbine. Here's the bulk of the flow rate, but some of it goes this way. There's a lower flow rate here. Then some of it peels off and there's even a lower flow rate here. You'd have one, two, three terms representing the power output from the turbine. And then you'd have one, two, three different flow rates with three different specific pump works representing power coming back in or backward to keep the process going. An easier way is to think about it this way. If it comes in as thermal energy and doesn't leave, because understand this is the only place where heat leaves. If it comes in as thermal energy in the boiler and doesn't leave as waste heat in the condenser, it must come out as a net quantity of power. So the easiest way to do this is to say that the net work would be sort of a Q in minus Q out, but since the flow rates are different in the boiler and the condenser, let me just write it this way. All of the mass flows through, you know what, let's, let me just, let me just do it this way. I won't do it the way I did it in my notes. The net power output you could write is Q dot in minus Q dot out. I think this will be easier to understand. Now, Q dot N would be M dot 6, which we know is 22 kilograms per second, times H7 less H6. Okay, so there's Q dot N. But Q dot out, on the other hand, would be the mass flow rate through state 6 times 1 minus Y minus C, because that's the fraction that actually goes this way. So 1 minus y minus z, not all of m dot 6 goes that way. And then times the enthalpy change between here. So h10 less h1. And this is a smaller, more compact equation than trying to deal with all of the different mass flows of the turbine and the pump. I would challenge you to try it though. This is good practice. And see if you can come up with the same number here. You should. 
So factoring out m.6, we have 22 kilograms. Well, I'll write it all down. You, you know the numbers. It's a lot of writing and wasted video time. So m.6 is 22 uh, kilograms per second. We know y and z. y is 0.0.